Now let's study extensions of Turing machines and think about whether or not they, rep they are able to recognize the same kinds of languages that uh, regular Turing machines can. So the first one we're going to study is known as the multi-tape Turing machine. To introduce it, recall the web page that, we've been, that I've been using to show the examples of Turing machines. If you notice, I did mention this before, is that the tape that is displayed on the bottom is actually a tape that grows on both sides, right? So, it, it, But this, the tape that we actually formally learned about only grows on the right-hand side. And when the, the tape's head tries to move past the beginning, it would just sit still, right? It shouldn't advance. Uh, to the left. However, in the website TuringMachine.io, the, Turing mach the tape can grow both sides. If you cut that in the middle, you actually get two. Two tapes that start in one part and are unbounded on the other side, right? One end would grow to the right-hand side and the other one would grow to the left-hand side. So essentially, what you have in the TuringMachine.io has you can think of it as having two tapes whereas a, a regular Turing machine just has one. So is the the Turing machine that is in the website TuringMachine.io more expressive than the one that we've been learning is a reasonable question to ask. So we can go a step further. You can we it can we can even think okay so is it more general to have two than to have one? That's to say, are there any programs that we could not recognize with a single tape that we can recognize with two? If you think about it, we can even generalize and go this a step further and think and ask ourselves, what if the machine has n tapes? Not just two or three. What if it has a thousand tapes? Would, it, would you be even able to represent even more programs? So what we are going to learn is that it, they are actually equivalent. So having one tape or having um, n tapes is exactly the same thing. So proving that you know a Turing machine with multi tapes can simulate a, a Turing machine with a single tape that's trivial, right? Because let the number of tapes be one, and you're good to go. On the other direction is not as easy. Let's see how, what is the intuition of the proof. So how could we design a Turing machine that is able to simulate a multi-tape Turing machine? So what we need to do is we need to encode the multiple tapes in my single tape. How do I do that? Well, we have to use a special character that is not in the alphabet. And we're going to use this character, which I'm using here as the sharp sign. And that's going to be the tape separator. It's going to separate one tape to the next. So let's say I want to represent this Turing machine that has one, two, three tapes in a single tape. How do I do that? I copy the contents of the first tape and I move it here on the first location, first part of the, my single tape. Then I add a tape separator. Then I put my second tape, which is CBA, right here, and then followed by that, another tape. Now my next problem is, I only have one head, whereas if I have multiple tapes, I would have three heads. So how do I represent three heads with a single head? Well, it's very easy. What you do is, you have a special character for each character. So that is to say, we have a signed character. I'm, I'm writing it in red, but the color really doesn't mean anything. And the dot, this is just, it's just a different character that uniquely represents B. So you have B and you have the counterpart for B, which is the signed B. And you have A and you have the counterpart for A, which is the sign A. And for C, you would have also the sign C, right? So now you duplicate your alphabet. Um, and I would encode this tape, sorry, this tape to be this tape location here. I just use the signed B to represent where I am in my tape. And then how do I perform one step? I perform one step 
by advancing on all three steps. Let's see, let's say my machine advances in all three tapes at once. Okay, so if it advances in all three tapes at once, what we need to do is well, we execute the tree one by one. First, we do this, second, we handle tape two, and thirdly, we handle tape three. As long as they don't overlap, we're all fine. Okay, so what do we do when we reach one of the ends? Right, we have these two separators, one in the beginning, one in the end. So what if I want to move past the separator? Well, what you have to do is, whenever you are here, let's say you're in C, and you are asked to move right. If you ha have to move right past the separator, what you need to do is, the Turing machine that is simulating the multi-tapes Turing machine, what it needs to do is, it needs to move all of these characters until the end of the third tape, move out everyone one position to the right. By moving everything one position to the right, you now have room to accommodate, to accommodate the extension of tape one, and therefore simulate the fact that tape one is unbounded. Okay, and you can do the same for tape two and the same for tape three. So essentially, those are the three functionalities you need to do. You need to have a way to recap. You need to have a way to separate the three uh, tapes. You have to have a way to represent what is the current state to encode it. Um, what is the current position of the, the head in each of the tapes. And then you need to have a way to introduce, to add, insert an element in the middle of a tape which is possible because on the right hand side is always there's always room for one more right so we can always move and copy things to the right and that's how you simulate using a single tape and multi tape turing machine so next le next let's think about the difference between a non-deterministic turing machine and a and just a regular turing machine are they equivalent or are they not 